what is more threatening to people not corrupt leaders not wars not famines not diseases a totally clear woman mm. is more threatening <laughs> even to women mm. let me tell you one thing maybe testosterone is not going to like it <laughs> bring it on stop <laughs> <laughs> the future belongs to women now the question is what kind of women yeah looking at the collective insanity of today it is important for women to understand and consider what kind of women are going to inherit the future mm-hmm. this doesn't mean that certain kind have to be put aside this simply means all of us all the women are heading towards the future but not all of us are prepared to handle it the future is gifting us it's gifting us a world but you should be able to perceive it this is not about just taking over from men this is about getting equipped first to perceive that world that's coming then you should have the capacity to hold it and make it tangible so it's available here so that it's not an esoteric trip because that can also be there are enough people who are seeing fantastic things in their perception but when you see their life it doesn't show it doesn't show what really attracted me to udumbara geso was that she's yes she's spiritual but she's also very much down to earth she's very clear about that it's no use being spiritual or esoteric if there isn't this element of the real world into it that's what really amazes me about her um because i always thought that um esoteric meant being a fluff ball um who was hovering 7 cm above ground and not getting their act together and not being able to pay their rent because there are a lot of examples of that kind of people around women have been beaten up thrashed for 3000 years intellectually and physically for being intuitive for being wise for being profound all these feminist movements have given us a fraction of our power back women have something completely else to give to the world than men and i feel like it's urgently needed but in order to really do that we have to get over that gap of just trying to be like men we have to come to our full potential so this is where udumbara is leading the way by guiding women to become absolutely clear in their lives and in this way she has contributed so much to my own life i'm trying to be that kind of woman that she is it's awfully inspiring <laughs> trying to live up to that everything she's taught me i i try to let my writing reflect that um because i know there's a lot of people reading my books and uh, young women girls i'd like them to to know that they that there's a chance that there's the possibility to become a nuclear woman we need absolute clarity and mind you i'm not talking about mental clarity never confuse your mental clarity with your absolute clarity there is no comparison at all absolute clarity is different from psychological clarity is the same difference that you will find between the sun and a light bulb in a room you were born with a direct connection to a timeless unconditional clarity within you when you're connected to it fully you don't need any babysitters and agents for your consciousness you're absolutely clear in life i never met a so young person so clear so charming also and so kind i think she's a very great teacher absolute clarity is a nuclear clarity 
and we all have been blessed with it. But when we are born and the umbilical cord is cut and the way we are raised damages that apparatus. It's like someone stole your life translator device and abandoned you in a foreign land with no clue about the native language. Now you are not able to understand the language that life is speaking with you because the device is missing. We disconnect from this absolute clarity and instead we are trained to rely on a light bulb to rely on the conditioned clarity which is based on right and wrong which is based on what is correct for a certain culture certain religion certain race certain gender but may not apply to anything else i wish the journey to awaken absolute clarity could be taught at school already so that when we meet life we are already equipped with our own inner clarity all of us can only imagine the amount of suffering and uh, struggle that would cut short for all of us. I'm not just a student of Udumbra Gisu who has participated in various classes with her. I lived with her in India for five years and I've known her now for almost two decades. So I have seen her up close in her greatest difficulties and also in her greatest successes. I watched her help all types of seekers find their own inner clarity and that is why I can say she has the heart of a realized woman. She helps you to tap into the upgraded version of yourself. It's not like a vaccination drive. Not everybody can be put in one row and given a vaccine and say now you are absolutely clear let's run this world. <laughs> there are only certain kind of women right now that will feel attracted to this work. Women who would like to rely more on their own clarity, more on themselves rather than outside on agents. Agents of God, agents of consciousness, agents of whatever. So women who are more drawn towards becoming their own resource and becoming their own validator becoming their own approval center. Usually, women social pressure and make life decisions in their life manipulative. I have also made a lot of compromise for compromise decisions for my survival. This will be my opinion that in this life, I have understood the whole game of manipulation and got the opportunity to get to know it. I want that every woman इस इनर फ्रीडम को एक्सपीरियंस करें और इसकी वजह से जिंदगी में जो सुकून मिलता है उसे भेजिए योर जर्नी टू अवेकन योर एब्सोल्यूट क्लैरिटी इज टू अवेकन दैट अन दैट इमूवेबल ट्रस्ट इन योर सेल्फ बिकमिंग द न्यूक्लियर वुमन इज टू लर्न हाउ टू लिव अ नेचुरली एक्सटैटिक लाइफ the kind of life that is built on self-trust. It's built on truth and it's built on courage. It gives you the ability to see through the fog. It gives you the power to outdo redundant paradigms and look at your own ecstatic life. So, yes, I do work with men and I work with men class about. <laughs> um, while a majority of men were driven by testosterone, the agent of the deprivation triad, mm. and they were waging wars, they were oblivious to a breed of men that were born to our mothers, that are sensitive, enlightened, and perceptive and these men are slowly rising to power and these are the men who can hold goddesses these are the men who consider their women queens whatever the role the mother wife sister girlfriend friend whatever the role and they also have their own space their own dignity such men are really driven to my work
I didn't fit in with the toxic masculine paradigm. So for an empath like me, it was hell. Now I feel like a tree, grounding my roots in my own absolute clarity and reaching out, ascending beyond this existing paradigm into truths that I know to be true for myself and a lot of you out there. I know her. I'm closely associated with Udum Ragesu. I see a being capable of holding the grace of the ascended masters, mystics that we only read about and dream of knowing, and having the presence, the sharp lightning presence of a pragmatic teacher. Imagine someone on a battlefield. A warrior facing life and death, but knowing with every movement, every moment, that their sword is just a channel for grace to come through. And I know that life is the lesson, and I'm constantly digging it, I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly redefining myself. I fall a million times, I fail a million times, I break my heart a million times. So Urumbara is all about authenticity. I observe that she's not lying to herself like so many of us do. She's not playing mind games. She's very clear with her thoughts and her actions and uh, she's walking the talk, which we all want to do. <laughs> she's doing it. <laughs> I try to as well because she's inspiring me in that way. But if you are not interested in you, then you won't journey with me. Then you will be a one-time product buying customer, mm. which I don't mind. You can, of course, I would love to make that money. <laughs> but you're not really interested. <laughs> I'm not interested. So show me something that you have and your resonance, your willingness to change, your willingness to work on you, your willingness to love you, your willingness to include you in your life, in your process, mm -hmm. is the kick that I get, is the thing that makes it interesting for me. She helps you to finally unleash the nuclear being that lies buried in all of us. I feel that a woman wakes up at 27, learns all throughout her 30s, and she begins to blossom by 40. She begins to blossom by 40. So my 40 is the new 16. Gesu Didi, if I describe one word, I will not say it in share. I believe in your intelligence as my audience, as someone who wants to work with me, someone who wants to journey with me, or even as a friend. You and I will have to have some resonance. So you will have to look at me, you'll have to hear my interviews, you'll have to hear my point of views, look into my eyes, search your own heart and see, do I come across authentic or not? Am I real or not? Am I something that excites you? Even, do I scare you? Because that's also good. <laughs> That's also some form of resonance, you know. Mm -hmm. If I scare you, that means somewhere you're liking what you're seeing, but you're not yet ready for it. So if I'm intimidating you, if my clarity is intimidating, that's also good news. That means there is a relationship that is possible. Yeah, Keso is good. Join her courses. Give her all your money. <laughs> Dedicate your life to her. <laughs> you know I'm going to keep it there. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! And yes, we are a cult. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Don't be misled by all the PR. <laughs> you want to spell it out? <laughs> so it's sisterhood that we need. <laughs> I would say womanhood. Woman. Hmm. And I wouldn't say just any womanhood, I would say the nuclear womanhood. Mm.